Hello and welcome everyone. This is the Cyverse Focus Forum webinar series and today uh, we are going to have a presentation on using VICE DEC2 for RNA differential expression analysis presented by Satish Perry. I'm Tina Lee. I'm Cyverse's uh, user engagement officer and Satish is a genetics doctoral student at the University of Arizona where he investigates link RNAs. Satish holds master's degrees in molecular biology from Manipal University in India and in biology from the University of Nevada. And he is also a certified instructor with the Carpentries. He, uh, prior to joining us at the U of A, he worked as a research associate doing clinical diagnosis. And now that he's back here at the U of A, he's pursuing his, pas his passion for software bioinformatics and in the field of genetics. Um, for those unfamiliar with Cyverse, we are an NSF-funded cyber infrastructure project. Hold on. And um, sorry, I'm just double checking about the, the recording. There we go. Um, we are an NSF-funded cyber infrastructure project, and this free webinar series is designed to fulfill a very important part of our mission, which is to train scientists on how to use Cyverse's computational resources. I'm gonna quickly take care of some housekeeping and then we'll start with the webinar. So Satish's presentation today is roughly 30 minutes with time for Q&A at the end. Please open the Zoom chat window and if you have questions, um, type them there and we'll read them out at the end and answer them. Materials from today's webinar, such as Satish's slides, documentation, and the video recording will be posted on a wiki page for which we'll email you the link later today, I hope. Um, we're also going to be moving towards putting um, the materials on a website, on our website. So, um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Cyverse Learning Institute is offering our second foundational open science skills course and our third container camp. Both are scheduled for spring of 2020. Please visit our website for more information on these trainings and to register. So without much more to say, I'll turn the webinar over, over to Satish. Hi, Satish. Hi, thank you, Tina. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. So uh, let's get started by looking at uh, the learning objectives for today's webinar. Uh, we'll try and go over the overview of the RNA sequencing workflow in general, and then we'll uh, quickly look at walkthroughs for two of the apps that we have uh, in store for today's webinar. One is the read mapping and transcript assembly app in the discovery environment, and the next one would be the uh, DEC2 uh, YSR Studio app. So for the uh, overview of the RNA sequencing workflow, RNA sequencing workflow starts off with uh, identifying uh, the, 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 the study of biology that you want to address. Um, and uh, the wet lab part of the, uh, the experiment involves uh, isolation of RNA, generation of cDNA fragments, and uh, subsequently sequencing of the reads to generate uh, FASTQ sequencing reads. Some of the questions that, you, uh, that can be addressed with RNA sequencing are what genes could be differentially expressed between sample groups? Are there any trends in gene expression over time or across conditions? Which groups of genes similarly change similarly over time or across conditions? And what processes or pathways are important for conditions of interest? So th some of, these are some of the questions that can be addressed using RNA-seq. So uh, the computational part of the RNA-seq pipeline starts with quality control of the sequence reads, where uh, you are judging uh, the quality, the per-base sequence quality of your uh, reads and discarding any of uh, the reads that do not match uh, uh, sta the standards. Once you're done with quality control, the, the next major step is for read mapping and transcript assembly, which involves uh, having the RNA-seq reads that we get uh, and uh, mapping them to a genome or a transcriptome. And uh, one such tool I've highlighted here is HiSat2 that does the read mapping to a genome. Once the genome has been assembled, uh, once the reads have been uh, mapped to the genome, uh, transcripts are assembled using uh, tools such as string tie. And finally, uh, we can quantify the reads 
uh, that have been mapped using a tool such as speech accounts. Uh, this is all when you have uh, a genome or a transcriptome available for mapping. Uh, if you are performing any uh, non-model organism uh, species analysis, you will want to have to assemble uh, transcripts de novo and then uh, quantify them for differential expression analysis. After read mapping and transcript assembly, uh, the next step uh, would be to perform statistical analysis to identify differentially expressed genes. Um, and the package that we'll be using, the R package, is the EC2 for differential expression analysis. And as you can see here, there are quite some steps in uh, before you can claim any statistical significance for differentially expressed genes. Uh, they will go through process procedures of normalization for the read counts, and this is primarily to eliminate systematic effects that are not associated with biological differences of interest. Uh, and once after normalization, DEC2 uh, uses a, a negative binomial model for uh, modeling the raw counts for each gene and eventually testing for differential expression. So with this overview, uh, how does the pipeline look in cyber's discovery environment? As I've, I've shown here, it is, uh, it's as simple as three steps. The first one involves getting your data into the cyber's data store. Second is performing the read mapping and transcript assembly using the RMTA app. And finally, uh, using uh, the RStudio DEC2 WISE app, we'll be able to, uh, 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 to identify differentially expressed genes. So in this pipeline, we are going from raw data to all over uh, differential expression results. So uh, let's look at each of these. The first part, getting data. Uh, as we said, like, you know, if you're performing uh, mapping to a genome, you will require the reference genome or transcriptome uh, uh, for that particular species, uh, a reference annotation file, and sequence treats, which could either be in the form of FASTQ files that you get from your sequencing facility, or uh, publicly deposited uh, SRA files, which can be downloaded and processed. There are a couple of ways of transferring uh, data to the Cybers data store, which include a command line client offered by IRODS, and also a graphical user interface uh, by CyberDuck, where you can drag and drop files into the Cybers data store. For more details on uh, transferring data into the data store, please look at Cybers Learning Institute wiki page. Uh, the next step, uh, once you have your data in the data store, is to use the RMTA app, as we have uh, integrated into the discovery environment. Uh, here is how the app looks. We will uh, look at it in more detail once we get into the, uh, the tutorial part of the uh, webinar. But this is uh, how uh, we provide a graphical user interface for launching RMTA jobs. And just to look at uh, the workflow of RMTA under the hood, uh, RMTA requires minimally uh, the files that we discussed, a reference genome or annotation and sequence reads, either in FASTQ forms or SRA IDs. If you are using SRA IDs, uh, the tool will download uh, the, uh, the sequence reads and uh, convert them to FASTQ files. Uh, once uh, you in, the input data is provided, uh, the next series of steps are a part of a pipeline uh, where the read mapping is performed using either HiSat2 or BOTI2. Users have the choice of selecting either of these aligners. Uh, once they have been mapped, transcript assembly is done using string tie 2 and the assemblies are compared using cuff compare. Finally, uh, read, uh, raw read counting is performed using feature counts. Uh, along the way, we have additional options to perform quality control uh, using the tool FASTQC, which we highly recommend uh, users to, uh, to, to do so. Uh, once the pipeline executes, we get a bunch of files as output, which include mapping, mapped reads, assembled transcripts, read counts, uh, read quality scores, uh, so on. Uh, which can then be used for downstream analysis for such as differential expression analysis, novel gene or isoform identification, or even non-coding RNA uh, identification. So this is uh, how the RMTA uh, pipeline looks underneath the hood. Uh, finally, once we have uh, the read counts from the RMTA app, uh, the next step is to move on to differential expression analysis using DEC2 package. Uh, uh, and this DEC2 package is, uh, um, is launched as part of uh, our studio interface, which is uh, uh, the uh, uh, which is a WISE app. Uh, WISE app is basically a visual interactive computing environment 
uh, a new feature rolled out in Cybers, which lets you launch interactive apps such as our studio. We'll be looking at that um, uh, in a moment. And here is the, uh, uh, the interface of the app that you'll find in the discovery environment. And once you launch the app, uh, you will be presented in our studio with the DEC2 package pre-installed, uh, which you can open in a web browser. Okay, so with that introduction, uh, we will, uh, I will introduce the test data for today's webinar. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, transcriptomic profiling of arabdosis during sequential biotic and abiotic stresses. So uh, here is a, a test condition where uh, we have three samples of control uh, samples and three of uh, drought condition samples for seven days. Uh, the library for these uh, uh, samples has been performed. Uh, the library prep has been performed uh, um, and sequenced on an Illumina HiSeq and the layout uh, of these reads are single end. These are single end reads uh, used for the library preparation. And okay, let's move on to the demo now. Uh, if you are following the web in, uh, the tutorial along with me, uh, now I will navigate to the, uh, the quick start page uh, for today's webinar. Uh, you will find all the necessary instructions needed uh, in the, on this wiki page. Uh, which you can follow either uh, right now or even uh, at your own pace. Uh, the prerequisites, of course, you need a Cybers account and we'll be using the discovery environment. Um, to launch RMTA with uh, test data, we have provided a quick launch button. So if anyone wants to uh, uh, follow the tutorial along with me right now, uh, right click on the button that you see that says powered by Cybers and click on open in a new tab which will uh, log you in to the discovery environment. And it'll open the RMTA app uh, uh, pre-launched for you. So uh, this is uh, in this quick launch feature, we have provided uh, the required files for, for performing uh, uh, read mapping and transcript assembly of the six samples that we have talked about. Uh, in the analysis name section, you can give this particular uh, 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 analysis any uh, name that you wish, but if you want, you can leave it as defaults. Uh, in the genome guided section, you can see that we have provided the Arabdasis genome uh, in the field for reference genome and also the, uh, the reference annotation file under the genome annotation section. Uh, finally, if you click on the single end reads, you will see that here are the six FASTQ uh, files that are, uh, in the current analysis uh, that have uh, been preloaded already. Uh, and clicking on the parameters section, this is where you uh, give information about what type of sequences are involved. Either these are single end or paired end, and in this case, they are single end reads. Uh, what was the library preparation protocol, unstranded or strand specific, you can select that here. Uh, the number of threads you want to run this particular job on. And here you have an option to click uh, run FASTQC, which is used for quality control. Uh, with all these uh, 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 input fields already pre-filled, all you need to do is click on launch analysis and, a and the job will be submitted to the discovery environment for execution. And on the, top, on the top right corner, you can see in the, the notification icon that uh, my job has been submitted and it is currently running. Now for the sake of uh, purposes of this uh, webinar, I am going to launch, I have already performed the RMTA for these uh, samples and now we'll move on to uh, launching uh, the DEC2 app for further differential expression analysis. Um, again, uh, for launching this particular app, as we will need a DEC2 script uh, for our analysis, uh, we also have provided a quick launch button. Either you can use that by right clicking and opening it in a new tab, or uh, you can also search for this particular app from within the discovery environment, which I'll show you right now. Okay. So to... Uh, yeah. This is Tina. I'm going to interrupt you for a minute. We're just having some people having audio problems. You're sounding fine, but I just want to give them time to exit, log back in, and make sure that their audio is on. So I apologize for interrupting sure. no the audience as well, but I just want to give them a minute or half a minute, a few more seconds. Sure. If you would just take a swig of water and a deep breath and then resume. That'd be great. No worries. 
I'm so Thank sorry you. to interrupt you. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we just discussed about how uh, we launch an RMTA job. Uh, once you're, once you, uh, uh, you submit the job and it's running, uh, you will get a notification when the RMTA job is finished. Uh, to, uh, and if you navigate to that particular uh, analysis folder, uh, this, as I said, this I have pre, uh, I have pre-performed this analysis already. Uh, you will see a folder like this that contains the output of the RMTA. Uh, the HiSat2 index for the genome and the log files, which contains detailed information on how exactly the job was performed and uh, when. By clicking on RMTA output, you can see here are all the output files for RMTA as we discussed. And there'll be a feature counts folder, which contains the feature counts file, which uh, will, we will use for differential expression analysis. So to launch uh, the DEC2 app, uh, Either you, as I said, you can uh, use the quick launch button on the on the wiki page, or if you want to search for it from within the discovery environment, you will have to click on the apps uh, tab uh, in the discovery environment and uh, search for DEseq2, which will bring up uh, all the apps that have DEseq2 uh, uh, in their name. And the particular app that we'll be using today is R Studio DEseq2 app. So, uh, and as I said, we will need a, an R script to analyze the differential expression data. To use the quick launch button to have the R script preloaded into the app as we launch it, uh, navigate to the app and click on the three buttons that you see on the top right corner of the app. And um, once you click that, it'll bring up a small menu where you can select quick launch. And once you quit, select on quick launch, here are some quick launch tutorials for this particular app. Uh, we will be using the RNA-seq webinar DE-seq to quick launch. Once you click on that, you will be given an option to click on a play button that says use this quick launch. By clicking on that, uh, we will open the uh, RStudio DEC2 app. Again, we can give an analysis name here, or you can just leave it uh, uh, as defaults. In the input files and folder section, you can see that I have loaded the DEC2 script. Now, all we need to, uh, to, uh, to provide this uh, app is the feature counts file that we get from our RMTA run. So for that, um, as I've shown you, uh, the feature cons file will be in the RMT output folder, and I'm going to just drag and drop that into the uh, uh, DEC2 app window. Now that we have the counts file for differential expression analysis and the script, uh, I will click on launch analysis. Uh, so launching a, a Vice apps will uh, in, uh, generate a particular URL, which you can then click to open that particular app in a new tab in your browser. So as you can see, once you have submitted the DEC2 app uh, uh, to the discovery environment, uh, you will get a link that says access your running uh, analysis here. And by clicking on that, first you'll be asked to authenticate and log in to uh, uh, using your cyber's credentials. Once you're in, uh, you will be presented with this RStudio uh, login page again. The username and password for logging into your R Studio are R Studio and R Studio. So it's R Studio in all lowercase letters. The username and password are the same. So R Studio, R Studio, and click on sign in. And we should now be in our uh, R Studio uh, interactive uh, app. So once we are in our R Studio, um, uh, we need uh, to find the files that we have loaded onto the uh, into this particular app. For that, we uh, I will ask you to go to the File Explorer towards uh, the bottom right corner, and in the File Explorer, I'm going to enlarge that a bit. Uh, in the File Explorer, uh, towards the top, uh, towards the uh, right uh, bottom middle bottom right corner you can see there's a uh, there are three buttons that you can use to uh, 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 go to a folder and let uh, we will be uh, navigating to the root directory so giving it a forward slash and clicking on okay uh, will take you to the root directory 
again i'm going to repeat that again so click on files and you will go to the three buttons towards uh, the right most corner and give it the forward slash which represents the root directory and click on ok and in the root directory our folder with the files is in de app dot uh, de uh, app work as you can see here clicking on that now will take you to the folder where you can see here is our uh, de seek to r script and feature counts file that we have loaded now before we begin the analysis let's set this particular directory as a working directory to set working directory uh, again uh, in the files explorer section click on more and you have an option there towards the bottom that says set as working directory clicking on that will set this particular directory where uh, whatever uh, images and results that we generate will all be saved to this particular uh, folder so once we have set a working directory click on the dec2 uh, uh, r script and it'll open the r script in a in a in a text editor window um, and as uh, I'm basically first going to run the whole uh, script that I have and I will then walk through what are the different steps in differential expression analysis in this particular script that we have seen. Uh, this is a script that I have uh, uh, adapted from Stephen Turner that I found on uh, from his blog and it's also available on GitHub. This is pretty much a template that anyone can use uh, uh, for doing the differential expression analysis. And because every experiment will be different and have its own uh, uh, flavors and uh, uh, constraints, uh, this is the exploratory part of uh, the RNA sequencing analysis, where depending on how much statistical significance you want or how you, how you want to make your plots, you can totally explore it here. Uh, but for now, I'm going to run the whole pipeline. So for that, I have uh, selected all the lines uh, in the text editor and I'm going to click on run. And you can see that uh, the script uh, is running. So uh, in this script, the first few, uh, uh, the first section is about importing the data. And you can see here I'm reading in the feature counts file uh, that we have loaded into the app. A uh, little bit of housekeeping to make uh, the tables much uh, nicer and convert them to a matrix. And then we are assigning a condition uh, of, for our differential expression analysis. In this case, we are comparing drought condition against control samples, and we have three uh, replicates for each. Once we have imported the data, the next is to load the DEC2 package and uh, create a DEC2 object in the next uh, section. Once we have created the DEC2 package, uh, the next step is to run the DEC2 pipeline. Uh, and you can see when you run the DEC2 pipeline, uh, it, is not, it undergoes through a steps of normalization, uh, dispersion estimate calculation, scaling factor uh, estimation, and, uh, and uh, basically uh, computing the log fold change values and finally giving us the differential expression results. Uh, once you run the DEC2 pipeline, we also have a small quality control section there where you will uh, can look at uh, perform looking at the dispersions uh, of uh, expression for your counts. Uh, you can we can look at uh, heat map samples, which uh, which is based on uh, uh, unsupervised clustering. So that would be a measure of how well your biological replicates are grouping together. That would be a very important information to assess how good your samples are. You can do principal component analysis, uh, which will tell you again how good your samples are. Finally, once you have performed the quality control uh, section, the, uh, the next uh, step would be to finally get to the different, getting differential expression results, where uh, you can uh, uh, find out, depending on the, the p-value significance that you're looking for, how many genes are differentially expressed between uh, the condition of your interest versus the control condition. Finally, uh, you, we have uh, in the script here where we will write the differential expression results to a CSV file that you can uh, be used for uh, uh, further uh, uh, exploration such as gene ontology, uh, depending on however dire whichever direction that your uh, research takes you. But you can see that like, uh, 
uh, we will be we'll end up uh, with a script uh, with a uh, with a list like this where we have our genes and we have lock to fold changes p values for those differential expression and the adjusted p values uh, which which correlate with the false discovery rate so uh, finally uh, there's a lot of visualization uh, that can be done in r r is especially powerful for uh, handling large tables and uh, very also very good with visualization um, lots of resources online on how to make your plots uh, much prettier and much more contain much more information uh, than just uh, plotting it uh, in 2d Finally, uh, once we have uh, plotted our uh, uh, results, uh, we have a command at the end that saves your R session info. That's basically recording all the packages and the version numbers of the packages that have been used uh, for this particular analysis, which uh, should aid in reproducibility of your analysis. So uh, we have run through the DESIG2 script and uh, we have uh, quite some plots and differential expression results. Uh, starting from raw data that you have uploaded into your into the Cybers uh, data store. Now that we have uh, finished our differential expression analysis, uh, time to save our work over here. By uh, on the top uh, right corner, you have the power button that says "Quit R Session." It's going to ask you whether you want to save the workspace uh, image, and in this case, we are going to say yes, save the workspace image, and you will get a notification that the R session has ended. Once uh, the, uh, you are done with the exploration of your data, you can be uh, back in your discovery environment. And by clicking on the analysis tab, uh, you can see that this particular analysis of DEC2 is still running. And because it's an interactive app, there is uh, a time limit on uh, how long the app will be running. The default is for 48 hours, but in case you think you need more time on uh, exploring your data, uh, you have the option of clicking the hourglass button to extend the time limit. But now since we have finished that analysis, uh, to save, to complete and save outputs, click on the three buttons uh, next to the analysis and you have the option to say complete and save outputs. So I'm gonna repeat that again. Once you're done with your analysis, click on the three buttons next to the analysis and you have the option to say complete and save outputs. So when you click that button, the, 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 uh, all the information in that particular uh, app uh, that we have processed is uh, saved and brought back to your data store and it should be available in your analysis window, which you can now uh, easily share with anyone on cybers or download it and uh, move it forward for publications. So with that, I think that is the end of the webinar. Uh, and I will be happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. That's great. Um, there is one question that was asked a while ago. Where is it? Sorry, I'm scrolling on. Okay, the question is, can RMTA be used for mapping and counting short reads? For example, miRNAs. No, this, uh, we have a different tool for uh, mapping short reads. Uh, but RMTA is not designed uh, for short read uh, mapping. Okay, and let's see, is there any other questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions. You did a really thorough job, and for those of you who joined later, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but Satish created a wiki page, a read the docs page worth documentation for all the things he did today. That uh, will, link will also be part of the wiki page that we send you the link for that'll have the video recording and um, and such. So then let's see, without further ado, if there are no, oh, let's see. What do we do, sorry, another question. Mm -hmm. What do we put into our MTA if there is no reference genome? Oh, uh, so if you're performing, uh, um, uh, in a performing transcriptome assembly in a de novo fashion without FS genome, we have the option of uh, doing that in RMTA. Uh, it's just that it was not uh, part of today's uh, webinar. We have detailed documentation in uh, for RMTA in performing either in uh, uh, when you when you have a reference genome or when you don't have a reference genome. Uh, and the link to RMTA wiki I have. I have pasted it in the uh, wiki page for today's webinar. 
Uh, also, uh, when, not only when you don't have a reference genome, if you uh, want to perform quasi aligners and use Salmon for uh, uh, mapping reads directly at transcriptome, we have that option too. So definitely more options in RMTA, uh, and for which details you can find in the RMTA wiki, uh, the link for which has been linked in today's wiki. Okay. And there was one more question about getting a hold of this video and the scripts that you're using. So again, that's in the documentation mm -hmm. uh, link and we will send all the people who registered for this webinar, those who attended today, as well as those who didn't make it today, we'll send them the link. So no worries about that, everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks so much, Satish. I just wanted to um, remind people that in two weeks, our next webinar on November 22nd will be presented by um, cyber science informatician Ramona Walls, and she'll be presenting on Don't Let Your Data Drag You Down. Ramona is our data guru, and she will show you best practices for how to use all the cyber's features to easily manage your data throughout the full data life cycle, from uploading your data, how to um, publish and share your data, how to use some of our existing templates for writing good metadata, et cetera. So she'll do a fairly quick take on that, but it's a real good reminder or an introduction to basically good data hygiene. So thanks everyone for attending Satish's webinar today, and we hope to see you online in two weeks. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day.